Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Kaji Salahuddin, TA of the present course. The course name is UAV Design Part 2. So today I will discuss some example problem. Uh, suppose if you have any mission requirement, if anybody give you the mission requirement and based on the given requirement, how will you design the aircraft or UAV? So let's say we have the mission requirement which are following like So we have the following mission requirement like weight of the aircraft should be less than 3000 kg. This is the first requirement. Four passenger plus one crew. Like uh, here we are designing the main aircraft. See suppose that we remove the person from the aircraft then it becomes the payload. So you can consider this is a weight of the payload also. So uh, from this mission requirement as we, you can design the manned aircraft as well as unmanned aircraft also. So the third requirement, this to our, the third requirement is the maximum range. Our aircraft sh should cover the 1000 kilometer range at least. And service ceiling should be the 7 kilometer. Like uh, this is nothing but at the maximum 
altitude at which the aircraft can fly. This is nothing but the service ceiling. Flight altitude should vary between mean sea level to 10,000 feet. Like if you want to fly the 0 kilometer, 1 kilometer, so our aircraft should not be feasible to fly only mean seven level. It should also fly at least from mean sea level to 10,000 feet. Okay? Five requirement and six requirement is design cruise speed should be in between 70 to 100 meter per second. Because here you are changing the altitude, no? so your flight speed will also change. And the seventh requirement is rate of climb should be five to six meter per second. This is also very important criteria for designing any aircraft because you want to climb at a, as fast as possible or uh, sometimes uh, uh, we want the uh, aircraft to fly as slow as possible. Like the, based on the mission requirement, the rate of climb is a very important criteria. And uh, the eighth one is takeoff distance should be 550 to 650. And uh, seventh one is landing distance should be in between 500 to 600 meters. Because these are also the restrictions. Sometimes runway are shorter, sometimes we have more uh, like longer runway. So these two will also come. Okay. So typically we will see how the mission profile will look like. So as you can say, you will start from here. Suppose that you are starting from here. You mark as a zero and then you are basically taxing. Okay and then you are going to climb and then there will be the cruise and then descent here you can also loiter and then you will land your aircraft okay so basically you mark 0 1 then 2 here and 3 here Suppose that you are not lightly here, your lateral point is here only. So this is 3 and this is 4 and this is 5. So this is nothing but the takeoff phase. This is your takeoff phase, this is your climb phase and this is your cruise phase. And this is your descent and then finally you will land your aircraft. Okay. So now if your aircraft is fuel powered, your taxing from 0 to 1, then taking off and climbing from 1 to 2, then cruising from 2 to 3 and then descending from 3 to 4 and finally landing from 4 to 5. So continuously the fuel will consume. So your aircraft weight will not remain the constant. Okay. So in our design example, first we will estimate the weight of the aircraft. Like what should be the weight of aircraft in order to achieve this requirement. So let's see how to estimate the weight of the aircraft. So first we will define what are the different types of weight aircraft has. Like first weight will be the W crew, the weight of the crew member, okay? So short form is WC, W crew equal to weight of crew. WP is weight of the payload. WF is weight of fuel. Also, we can W fuel. WE is a empty weight. W 
empty empty weight of the weight of the aircraft so total weight of the aircraft you can write as w not is a total weight of the aircraft then w not will become the sum of this weight wc weight of the crew wp weight of the payload wa f weight of the fuel and we is a empty weight you can take as a equation 1 one thing you can notice in equation 1 you don't have any weight right you don't have wc you don't have wp you don't have wf do you don't have we what you will do here so if we don't know the individual weight we will find out the fraction weight how we will see later so if you do some mathematical manipulation here then a question one can be rewritten as wc plus wp divided by 1 minus wf by w not minus wc by w not if you bring this here and if you rearrange you will get equation 1 from equation 1 you are getting this you mark as equation 2 so now you can see equation 1 and you can see equation 2 equation 2 is nothing but written in terms of fraction like fraction inter with uh, w not like wf by w not wc by w not so these fraction we can uh, find out like wf by w not we can find out i will tell you how we can find out these things this is we empty weight okay not wc so when you are designing your aircraft you know the crew weight right and you know also the payload so if you know these two fraction wf by w not and we by w not you can find out the value of total weight of takeoff right so let's find out the we by w not so as you know so many aircraft already has been designed like numerous number of aircraft has already been designed which lie on the category of the uh, aircraft which we want to design like less than 3000 kg like so if you do the literature survey then you will find out to so based on the current weight requirement your we by w not will come out around 0.7 0.62 you can follow one book which is aircraft design by dp rammer it is a conceptual approach and uh, another one is jd anderson aircraft design aircraft performance and design so in that you can find out this value because i am taking from there only okay so we by w is 0.62 so many books are available to find out the we by w not but i am giving the two reference first one is aircraft design by dp rammer and second one is jd anderson uh, the book name is uh, aircraft performance and design so we by w not we have so if we found out wf by w not we can get the w not so now we will find out wf by w not okay you can notice that your aircraft is cruising from 2 to 3 and you 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 also have the range requirement range requirement is what its maximum range should be 1000 km right 1000 km so 1000 km you have range so based on this data range 
यू कैन फाइंड आउट द वेट फ्रैक्शन फ्रॉम हेयर टू हेयर हाउ विल यू फाइंड आउट सी इफ यू ऑलरेडी वॉन्ट टू डिजाइन द पर्पल पावर्ड एयरक्राफ्ट लाइक जनरली दिस कैटेगरी ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट लाइज ऑन द विल बी द पर्पल पावर्ड ओनली नॉट जेट पावर्ड ओनली ओके सो यू कैन राइट रेंज एस ए रेंज ऑफ द पर्पलर पर्पलर पावर्ड एयरक्राफ्ट पर्पल पावर्ड एयरक्राफ्ट मीन्स द इंजन विल बी पिस्टन इंजन और रिसिप्रोकेटिंग इंजन एंड कनेक्टेड टू द पर्पलर ओके ईटा पी आर बाई सी एल बाई डी एल एन डब्ल्यू टू बाई डब्ल्यू थ्री स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम डब्ल्यू टू एंड एंडिंग टू डब्ल्यू थ्री इन क्रूज फेस सो डब्ल्यू टू बाई डब्ल्यू थ्री so this will be the range so you can notice that if you know the range and if you know the engine specification like how much specific fuel consumption the engine has and uh, propeller efficiency and at what l by d you are flying you can find out the w2 by w3 so in our case what is range so after this follow me here like you have range 1000 km right it is given 1000 km range it is given and l by d maximum range right so if you are flying the maximum range then l by d should be max okay so l by d max also given let's say 13 if it is not given then assume okay see these are the iterative process if your mission requirement is not satisfying you have to take the another loop eta pr 0.85 generally and c is once you select the reciprocating engine you will get the specific fuel consumption generally it is 0.4 lb hp per hour so you can notice that it is better to convert all the unit in a uh, si unit only you just convert into the one unit i mean to say so like range is in given kilometer convert into meter and these are lb hp hour so you just convert into si unit what you will get point For LB is given na just multiply by 9.81, okay? 9.81 watt is HP if you 746, 1 HP equal to 746 watt, okay? And then hour to second you just multiply by 3600. So you will get 1.46. One one into ten power minus six one by meter. So you can see this has no unit. This has no no unit. This also has no unit, and this is one by meter. Meter will go up. You will get the range in meter. Okay. So if you substitute this value, R value here, also eta P R and C here, you will get W two by W three. range is 10 power 3 okay then eta pr 0.85 what specific fuel consumption you got 1.46 11 one, one 10 power minus 6 okay your l by d is 13 okay how ln w2 by w3 solve this you will get w2 by w3 is 0.5 Six one four. See, I request you to please take at least five digit so that you can get the good results. If you approximate here, if you approximate here, means you are approximating here, and if you are approximate here, you will are approximating here. So everywhere, if you do the approximation, your result will not be correct. Okay, so you you just take at least five digit. Okay, if it is there. So you are getting W two by W three is uh, W three by W two. Sorry, this is W three by 
W2. W2 and W2 by W3, you will get 1.14136. If you reverse this, W3 by W2 will come 0.87614. What will be the like uh, uh, W4 by W1 and W4 by W5? Like, what is the fuel consumption in descent phase? What will the fuel consumption in landing phase? So now we we can from this data we can find out the how much fuel consumed in cruise phase, not descent phase, not landing phase, not climb phase, and not as well as takeoff phase. So the, in these four phases, one, two, three, four, we have to approximate. And from the given data, we can find out the amount of fuel consumed in cruise. So you just remember this W3 by W2, we will use this, okay? And WE by W0 also. WE by W0, which is 0.62, Actually, we didn't get, we have taken from the literature survey. This we got from the formula. 0.62, okay. I will tell you what is the use of this. So, you just see from W5 and W0. You can write mathematically W1 by W0. W2 by W1, okay, then W3 by W2, multiply W4 by W3 and W5 by W4. See, W4, W will cancel, W3, W3 cancel, W2, W2 cancel, W1, W1 cancel, you will get W5 by W1, which is written here. So, that means you can write WF by W0 like this. So, why we are writing this? See, if you closely see this expression, W1 by W0 is the weight fraction from here to here. Similarly, this will be from this to this, okay? Likewise, W5 by W4 is nothing but for landing, okay? And uh, what will be the fuel weight? Like WF will be W0 if you consume all the fuel. If you consume all the fuel, you are starting from here and landing at this place and you are saying that your Fuel, all fuel will get consumed. So at the end, what you have, you will have. Here you have W naught weight, and here here you have W five weight, and your all the fuel uh, get consumed, right? So you can write W F is nothing but W naught minus W. You just subtract this two. Okay. Earlier we have make a question one or two, na? So you just make this 3 and 4, okay? You just do some mathematical manipulation, simple. You will get WF by W0, just divide by W0. You will get 1 minus WF by W0. Now, if you say my fuel didn't get completely consumed, like 6% or 7% we have a saving, then this expression you can further modify it. WF by W0 equal to 1.06. That means 6% fuel you are reserving. Like, see in your, everywhere you're in your bike, your car also, the, some fuel are reserved. Na? So in aircraft also some fuel is reserved. Let's say we 6% fuel are reserved. Okay, so this expression will nothing but become WF by W0. Okay. So you can slowly observe that what I am doing these things like. If you go back to my, when I started the lecture, I written that W0 equal to WC plus WP 1 minus WF by W0 and WE by W0. 
if I'm not mistaken, to estimate the weight of the aircraft. So we don't have WF by W naught. From literature survey, we got WE by W naught. But that time, we don't have WF by W naught. So you can see now we are finding WF by W naught. OK? For that, we need WF by W naught. And for this WF by W naught, W5 by W naught, we are getting from equation 3. So to f in order to find WF by W naught, we need W1 by W naught, W2 by W1, W3 by W2, W4 by W3, W5 by W4. So W3 by W2 we have already found out. Okay? So now we want W1 by W naught, W2 by W1, W4 by W3, and W5 by W4. Okay? So every value is important. And I need, I need the place. Let's say 0.62 I'm writing again and 0.87614 this is we by w naught and wf by sorry w3 by w2 erase this we will get the space in order to do the further calculation So, you just closely observe the equation 3, W5 by W0. So, F W1 is W0 means from 0 to 1. So, the ratio in literature survey you will get 0 0.97 for this weight category of aircraft. Similarly, as you got here WE by W0. Okay? And W2 by W0 will be 0.985. Okay. And W2 by W3, you already the got the very corrected value, right? Very correct value. Okay. And then W4 by W3. So W4 by W3 means at uh, descent you are not consuming any fuel. In reality, you will consume some fuel. As of now, you just consider one. Le negligible, not exactly one. And WF5 by W0 in landing, 0 0.995. So if you multiply, you will get 0 0.832022. This will be the WF by W0. If you put this W5 by W0 in the modified equation with 6% fuel reserve, you will get WF by W0. WF by W0 you will get 0 0.177. You just also get some feel for this fraction. Like see, WF by W0 is very less compared to these two fractions. So, weight fail fraction is less compared to the empty weight fraction and with respect to the total weight, the fuel weight is very less. Like here, you don't compare this ratio with this. You compare this ratio with this because this is written in the W0, it is also written in W0. So, empty weight is more compared to the fuel weight. Okay. So, you know the fuel weight and uh, you know the empty weight fraction. You just put these two fractions, you will get W0. But there is a way to put the, find out the payload. How will you find the payload? Like we have already specified the passenger, way, four passenger is there, right? And uh, you know, if you are going for a flight, you will also have some bags and all. So you can, that weight also will come into the picture, like at least 15 kg bag weight, okay? So this two fraction is there, now we will write approximate here. So the average crew weight will be the 80 kg, that is the normal 80 kg or 75 kg, that is the normal average human weight, healthy human weight. So we have four passenger, right?
फोर पैसेंजर सो द पैसेंजर वेट विल बी डब्ल्यू यू जस्ट से पैसेंजर पी एस फोर वन परसेंट वेट इज एट्टी तो फोर विल फोर इंटू एट्टी दिस विल बी द थ्री ट्वेंटी के जी ओके एंड लेट्स से एवरी पर्सन इज कैरिंग टेन के जी एक्स्ट्रा वेट सो हाउ मेनी पर्सन इज देयर फोर पैसेंजर प्लस वन क्रू फाइव मैन राइट सो डब्ल्यू पे लोड विल बी नथिंग बट थ्री ट्वेंटी एंड फाइव पैसेंजर कैरिंग टेन के जी एक्स्ट्रा वेट विच इज नथिंग बट द बैग एन ऑल फाइव इंटू टेन ओके यू विल गेट थ्री सेवेंटी के जी ओके दिस इज नथिंग बट योर पे लोड वेट ओके सो आई थिंक यू गॉट ऑल दिस थिंग डब्ल्यू सी ऑल्सो क्रू वेट डब्ल्यू P also payload weight, W F by W naught, which is fuel fraction, and W E by W naught, which is empty weight. So, you just substitute this value, you will get the answer. So now I am estimating W naught, which is a nothing but the weight of the aircraft. Is 80 kg already fixed payload? You have find out three. 370 सेवेंटी के जी फ्यूल वेट जीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन सेवन वन माइनस पॉइंट सिक्स टू इज एम्पटी वेट फ्रैक्शन ओके यू विल गेट डब्ल्यू नॉट टू टू वन सेवन पॉइंट एट फोर के जी which is nothing but less than the 3000 kg which is our requirement okay so now you have w not right additionally you can found out the wf also how much amount of fuel is required in order to complete this mission so wf by w not into w not this fraction you know w not to know if you put this value you will get 392.77 kg okay so your weight is estimated remember that your weight is w not is 2217.84 kg okay i request you to do this exercise for a no passenger no crew just payload weight 100 kg that's it that means unmanned aircraft right this is the manned aircraft you have passenger so i request you to do the exercise for a unmanned aircraft you will get the feel so our weight is estimated right this weight but your aircraft is flying how will you lift this weight this much weight 221784 kg you have to lift and you know aircraft wing can lift the whole aircraft right means 90 percentage of the lift is coming from the wing so how long and how wide your wing should be in order to meet this requirement like lifting the this much kg of the weight so next we will see the uh, wing design in order to for lifting the weight okay mostly our aircraft is flies at a steady state and level flight like if you compare the time from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 you will get your aircraft is mostly fly from 2 to 3 okay so if you are aircraft is mostly fly at that particular condition then we have to take the consideration like we have to design our craft which is satisfying all the requirement in that phase 2 to 3 so when your aircraft is flying at a steady state and level flight a steady state and level flight means your wing is level 
you are not rolling right and you are not rolling left your wing is level and your you are maintaining the constant altitude you are not dropping altitude and you are not increasing the altitude and you are following the straight path so std means with the time the variable is not changing so here the altitude is not changing with time okay so std is said level flight so that means your weight of the aircraft should be balanced by lift and which is nothing but half rho v square s into cl this is your lift okay see there is a limit of v at which you can sustain the lift equal to weight so that minimum speed is called stall speed and correspond to that minimum speed the cl will be the cl max okay you are flying at the maximum angle of attack at which it can sustain the steady state and level flight so now this expression will become w by s bring the s here you will get 1 by rho v star square into cl max okay sometimes we in a requirement stall speed is also given like the stall speed should be minimum 30 meter per second like if it is saying so in the present case suppose that you are flying at a sea level you take density 1.2 to 56 we stall is nothing but already you are specifying your craft should fly at a minimum at least 30 meter per second and see if you are taking off you will deflect flaps so generally cl max will be 1.1 to 1.5 but you without flap deflection if you deflect the flap your cl max will increase so in the present case 2.3 value i am taking if you just see the book aircraft performance and design by jd anderson you will get this value remember that flap is the device which is used to increase the cl max it is always deflect in the downward direction and usually we will disturb the flap in a take off or landing portion we don't generally disturb the flap in a cruise condition and all so generally if you want to make more lift like in during the take off we want if you want to cover the shorter distance in a, if you are taxiing in the runway if you deflect the flap you will get more cl so at a minimum speed you can take off okay so if you put this value what you will get your wing loading will be 129.306 kg per meter square that means 129 kg is capable 1 meter square is capable for lifting the 129.30 kg weight this is the beauty of wing loading but see you are taking only one phase you are calculating the wing loading based on the stall approach that is not enough our aircraft flying as a stall condition as well as design cruise speed in take off also in cruise also so we have to take that case also we should not limit the our calculation to this stall condition only so let's say we are cruising from 2 to 3 cruising and our design speed is 70 meter per second and our design cl is 0.4 so just rewrite the equation again the half row 
v square s into cl w by s will become half rho v square not cl it is cl okay now w by s at your design speed you are flying at a sea level your design speed is 70 at this design speed your cl is 0.4 okay so you will get the wing loading approximately first here if you calculate you will get newton you just divided by 9.81 you will get 122.435 kg per meter cube. This is your W by S at cruise speed because if you remember at the starting of the lecture the cruise speed is al uh, also uh, given as a mission requirement design speed. The design speed is 7200 meter per second remember. So, these two approaches I have calculated wing loading based on this cruise condition and based on the one is stall approach. You can say not cruise con condition, one is stall approach, one is design speed, okay. Stall speed, design speed, okay. In from these two approaches we have calculated and since we are deflecting the flaps that means this is nothing but the takeoff phase and this is nothing but the cruise phase, okay. So, I want to give one exercise. You just calculate the wing loading based on the landing. Like takeoff you have, cruise you have, you just do the calculation for landing. I have done, I will attach this uh, material like based on the landing, uh, I will attach in this uh, week as a separate extra material. But I before that I will request you to find out the wing loading based on the landing approach. The book names I have already, already given to you. Okay. So, now you have wing loading right and you have that means if you have weight you can find out the area. So, area wing area see our primary purpose is to find the wing area how much wing area is required in order to lift the weight which we have found out in the first step after so many calculation right. So, wing area you can write S is nothing but W divided by W by S, right. So, see you have calculated two wing loading, right. One is from stall velocity approach and one is from cruise velocity approach. Which one you will select? You just think about this and please post in the forum like which see very close to each other but which one will you select. So, I am selecting as a, a cruise uh, condition which is design speed. You can also select from the stall, but if you are selecting this wing loading instead of the wing loading which we have found out from the stall approach. There is a some difference when you fly from 0 kilometer to 5 kilometer like when you are calculating from the takeoff approach means your W naught is at the starting value. When you are cruising your fuel is getting consumed. So, there will be some difference. So, I want to know this difference. I, I am giving you as exercise okay, what is the difference between uh, if you consider this wing loading and that wing loading which you have found by stall approach, okay. You just take W is how much? W is nothing but 2217 
point eight four and W by S is nothing but one twenty two point four three five. This is nothing but eighteen point one one meter square. This is area. Okay, eighteen point one one meter square area. This we including correspond to that design speed. If you take the stall wing loading, that means the wing loading which you calculated at the stall speed, you will get S is 17.15 meter square. Okay, there is a one term in aircraft design which is aspect ratio that. tells the how wide your aircraft is compared to the span wise length like aspect ratio is nothing but the b square by s and for rectangular wing this is your span this is your quad c bar or c You area you can write b into c bar b b will get cancelled to b by c. Like suppose that this is your wing, so this is nothing but the span. So this is you can consider as a length, and this is as a width. So how long compared to the width? That basically as per ratio. This is for rectangular wing. And this is for journal any case type art swept back everywhere this formula is valid so this is also one the selection criteria for designing aircraft like you might have heard like glider aircraft fighter aircraft commercial aircraft general aviation aircraft these aircraft belongs to the particular class of aspect ratio like glider has a high aspect ratio you you can see glider has a very large wing span very large span b square aspect ratio will be higher fighter aircraft very short wing less aspect ratio b will increase decrease aspect ratio will decrease general aviation aircraft like as per ratio 10 11 12 13 so basically what aircraft we are designing that belongs to the general aviation aircraft basically the trainer aircraft that means four or five passenger will be there one pilot will be there one co pilot will be there next to max six person six seven like so as per ratio you just assume 10 okay so you know the area you know the aspect ratio you have assumed right you can find out the how much span of the wing so this is nothing but 10 into 18.11 you will get 13.45 this is span if you calculate from the another approach if you put s equal to 17 you will get span you just second approach put two put one here okay you just put two here it is better in b1 will be 13.09 little difference is coming okay see generally when we are designing our aircraft we will do the optimization later first we will do the primary design after that we will do some optimization right so let's say we don't have any type at swept back 
diahedral, that things will come later. Simply, we are taking a rectangular wing in the present case for Later, we will do the optimization. So, C bar will be nothing but from this equation, okay. For rectangular wing, expert ratio already I told you, B by C bar, right? So, C bar will become expert ratio by B. So, expert ratio is 10, okay. B by S per ratio, right? B is you have find out, right? How much? 13.45 just divided by 10, 1.345 meter. You have to be very specific in terms of unit. It is meter everywhere. C bar, that means C2, second approach, right? And from first approach, C1, that means you are calculating based on the stall approach, 1.309 meter. Little difference is there. So, now, your wing sizing is now completed. First is weight estimation. For that particular class weight, you required the wing. You design your wing. Area is this much. Span is this much. Your wing cord should be 1.309. So, this is nothing but the wing sizing. But see, you are taking off, climbing, cruise, descent, landing, where you will get the power. See, you, these things lift, where you can get lift, when your aircraft flies like, you need some velocity, where you can get that velocity. You are not falling any under gravity, like, uh, so you, you are going, climbing against the gravity, from where the power will come. So, basically, from the engine, the power will come. So, uh, in the next class, I will explain about the how to select the engine, like to meet the specific requirement for taking off from 0 to 1, climbing from 1 to 2, cruising from 2 to 3, descending from 3 to 4, followed by landing from 4 to 5. So, how will you select the engine? That I will discuss in the next class. Thank you so much.